It is said that someone questioned Rockefeller and said, what else do you want? And he said, just another million. Now, that story may be apocryphal, but that's often the attitude that many of us have. We never have enough. We just need another pound or another 20 pounds. Or if we just had another thousand dollars or another 5,000 pounds invested or just another $20,000 invested, if we just had another pound, another hundred, another thousand, another million, why is it that we never seem to have enough? Why is it that we never seem to reach the point where materially we feel absolutely secure? Well, what we have been sharing together at this point broadcast time for several weeks now is because it's not actually physical and material security that we're after. What we're really after is what that expresses. And material and physical security expresses for us what we were made for. The love of an infinitely powerful Father, who has at his disposal all the resources of the universe. That's what we were made for. And that's what we've been saying, that uh, the evidence of an intelligent mind behind the universe and the evidence that we have from the remarkable life that was lived by a man in the first century of our era suggests to us that there is a creator, there is an intelligent mind, an intelligent person behind all of this, and that he in fact created us because he wants friends. He wants friends. He just wants people who will be close to him and will love him and will understand him and whom he can love and understand. And he gives us this sense of love, and with that sense of love gives us the assurance that if he thinks all that of us, then he will certainly supply us with all that we need in this life in the way of food and clothing and shelter. And that's what we were made for. And when we determine to live as if he doesn't exist and to live as if there is no God and there is no creator and as if that's all old, old-fashioned myth stuff, then we miss that love and we miss that security. And, of course, what we do is we try to establish the security for ourselves in this present life, thinking that that's what we need. But, in fact, it doesn't matter how many millions we amass. It doesn't matter how secure our job is. It doesn't matter how sure we are of our pension and our retirement. Finally, it'll get us the cancer or the incurable disease or something will get us, and we'll be thrown into that realm of darkness after this life is over where we cannot trust anybody because nobody has power over that except the creator of the universe. And so finally we have to come down to it that security, physical, material security, will not supply us with the reassurance that love supplies us with, the love of a person whom we can trust as the absolute ruler of the whole universe. And uh, what we end up doing is trying to substitute for that love material security. So it doesn't matter what we do. You know the way we go at it. We try in all kinds of ways to build up our investments, to build up our pension funds, to build up our investment in real estate, to build up the equity that we have in our homes, to build up the plans we have for our retirement, to ensure that we have enough health insurance to cover even catastrophic illness. We even have children, many of us, to ensure that when we need looked after, we'll have somebody who has a sense of obligation to us. Or we marry for the same purpose, to ensure that there will be a provider when we are no longer able to provide for ourselves. And we end up in all kinds of situations that are meant to supply us with that sense of security. Of course, in the doing of it, we become monstrosities. You know how dominated we become 
how driven we become in our desire to get financial security. Many of us have become the very opposite of what we started out to be. Some of us had great artistic abilities. Some of us had real musical abilities. Some of us had talents that we knew our teachers were right in saying that we had them, but we decided we'll cash them in, we'll cash our chips in for hard cash. And we decided we would go some other way. And we ended up in a job that makes more money than we would otherwise make with our talent. But we no longer have satisfaction from life. We're just going through motions. And we've been going through motions for years until we've almost forgotten what we started out to be. And we find ourselves in the same position as Worth was described, the, that heaven lies about us in our infancy. Shades of the prison house begin to close around the growing boy. At length the man perceives it die away and fade into the light of common day. And many of us have found that to be true. We found that in trying to establish this security that we want, we've become monstrosities. We've become robots that go through the motions of our business or our work day after day. We don't care about the work. We aren't interested in the business. All we live for is the day when we'll retire and we'll have enough to, and we think, to break into heaven. And, of course, we get to that point and we find we're bored and we're frustrated and we find our health deteriorating when the very raison d'etre of our life, that is the reason for our existence, the very drive and motivation that keeps us going, is no longer present. And we find that there's no point in doing anything else but dying because there's no point in living. And so we, by means of this pursuit of security, become monstrosities. And, of course, you know what it has made us in our homes so often. We are irritable with the children, irritable with our wives because the money isn't going the way we want it to go, the job isn't going the way we want it to go. Even as we approach retirement age, we get more desperate, it seems, and more fanatical. And so we become consumed by greed and consumed by envy and consumed by anger and bad temper when... We can't get the food and the shelter and the clothing that we need. Indeed, some of us, as we proceed through Shakespeare's ages of man, become more fascinated by clothes, more fascinated by food, more fascinated by our homes. We polish and clean until we seem as if we're fit for a mental asylum or a psych ward. So consumed are we with the need to establish our security. We worry and are anxious and fret at night, are unable to sleep so often because we're preoccupied with getting just one more pound, one more dollar. And that's part of the perversion that takes place in our natures because we become driven by things, preoccupied with things, driven by the need for things, driven by the need to accumulate things, irritated when we don't get things, and we become thing-dominated so that our whole personality, instead of working from a consciousness of the love of the infinite creator who rules the universe for us, we become dominated by these intractable things that will not yield to our manipulations. And so our personalities have become perverted, and we've become the very opposite of what we once started out to be when we were teenagers or when we were children. That's some of what takes place with many of us because we have started to live as if there is no creator, as if there is no maker of the world, as if there is no one who is our father, no one who cares about us. And after our dad dies, it seems as if there's nobody to look after us and we'd better start looking after ourselves. And so we become driven by that need that there's nobody will take care of you outside your own and so you'd better take care of yourselves. And we become that autonomous, independent being that was all the time made to be a dependent, guided being. So our personalities become dreadfully perverted. There is another consequence of this way we live, and maybe it'll shed more light on your own motivations if we talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> 